some commanders in rise of kingdoms just aren't quite what they used to be some commanders that came out a long time ago have been super dominant in the meta for years at this point but their shine is starting to fade so today i'm gonna go over 12 commanders that you may want to consider avoiding investing in in rise of kingdoms what's going on guys cheers now a few days ago i made a video talking about power creep in rise of kingdoms and if you're curious about that i encourage you to check it out on the channel this video was prompted by the release of juga liang coming into the game and him being very very powerful speaking of juga liang we have at least one more wheel of fortune coming up here for his sculptures and i heard if you drop a thumbs up on this video you're gonna get really good luck on your next juga liang wheel this is not financial advice okay anyway in that video on my channel we talked about power creep and that led me to the conclusion that if there are some commanders that are coming into the game that are more and more powerful that must mean that there are some commanders that are falling off the bandwagon they're becoming less and less relevant as we get more powerful commanders in the game and this even applies to commanders that historically have been exceptionally good in rise of kingdoms so i wanted to make this video so that way you guys know if you're a new player and perhaps you're watching some older content on my channel or on other rise of kingdoms youtubers channels you don't get confused okay now does that mean the commanders we're going to talk about in this video are bad no absolutely not there's going to be some commanders we talk about that are exceptionally good and i'm going to clarify why I think we should not be investing in them in 2023 throughout the video so if you see your favorite commander here just know it doesn't mean they're bad but we do have to discuss a couple of things okay so the first thing is when we take a look at a commander we have to evaluate how good are they in the current meta right that makes a lot of sense and by the current meta just to be clear we're talking about open field pvp fighting uh, that's the general trend of a lot of these advice videos that I give you guys because that's going to be 90% of the PVP that you do here in this game, unless you are a garrison or rally lead. So if you're looking for garrison and rally advice, this is probably not the video for you. Although I do think a lot of this does translate to rally and garrison commanders as well. But with that disclaimer aside, one of the first things that we look at when evaluating whether or not a commander is worth spending your legendary commander sculptures on is first of all how good are they in the current meta right how good are they if you were to use them today in the open field would they perform really well okay obviously that makes a lot of sense but the second thing and I think that this is more important is that how difficult will it be for them to be power crept out of the game in the future in other words are these commanders doing something really unique that's going to keep them competitive in the pvp environment so for example okay guan yu came into the game a very long time ago he came into the game years ago and yet he is still used very often in the open field because he has a very unique three second silence on his active skill and he has a really nice 2000 damage factor aoe with additional damage on his fourth skill now the damage is something that can sort of be power crept out of the game but the three second aoe silence is unique to guan yu there's no other commanders that are doing an aoe silence and therefore there's something about guan yu that makes him stand out and that's why he's been so good for so long now if we take a look at somebody like charles martel for example he has a shielding factor a little bit of damage a lot of stats which is nice and that's pretty much it he's not really doing anything super unique here with his kit so it's relatively easy for him to be power crept out of the game or replaced by somebody else who simply does the same thing with higher stats I mean we saw this with Pakal coming into the game and this is where I think a lot of players make mistakes right they invest in a commander that is maybe good in today's meta but they don't realize that you know the meta changes every few months in rise of kingdoms and the commanders that they're investing in today may not be able to survive a power creeping meta so now that we've established that criteria I have in my tier maker three different tiers of commanders that we're going to go over today we have the caution tier the concern tier and the warning tier okay the caution tier is a tier of commander that I think there's a chance that they can be power crept out of the game in the very next commander cycle so if they're a cavalry commander and they are in the caution category that means there's a chance the next commander release could replace them okay the concerned category is even worse what this means is if there's a commander in the concerned category I would almost be willing to bet 
that the next release of that troop type is going to replace them i i'm very very concerned that these commanders are not going to be meta viable within the next six to 12 months and the warning category essentially means that if you're investing in, the, in a commander in the warning category they've probably already been replaced by something better and again this is not to say that any commanders we talk about in this video are bad okay they may perform really well and in fact some of the commanders we're going to talk about i use a ton and they perform really well but that doesn't mean that they're going to continue to provide that value in the next six to 12 months with that being said let's talk about ysg okay ysg is one of the first commanders that comes to mind here and i think that there's a lot of uh ysg slander going on right now okay uh when juga leong came into the game and first tests started coming out um i was telling people in my videos that hey you, you probably can replace your ysg now with juga leong and just get better results uh, i think chiskel also made a similar statement i think in his thumbnail he said something like rip ysg right uh and i think that that is you know i did the same thing with, with nevsky so that's just how the youtube clickbait game goes okay i get it i do it i'm i'm horrendous with my clickbait okay so i'm not i'm not criticizing chiskel for that but i think that uh, to say that ysg is dead is wrong i i think that's wrong i think ysg is still extremely good in rise of kingdoms but he goes in the caution category okay he goes in the caution category because one juga leong is definitely a better ysg but YSG, if you continue to use him, is going to continue performing really, really well. And also, if you're going to run two or more Archer Marches, I think YSG belongs in one of those two. I've even had people comment on my last video talking about Artemisia and how good she is with Boudicca, and I, I totally get that. But from my experience, I feel like YSG is still really good, and I would rather have YSG than Artemisia. And maybe I'll, I'll talk about that in another video and why I feel so strongly about that. But I am putting YSG in the caution category you may even say that he belongs in the concern category but because we just got an archer release it's going to be a while before we get another archer release so i'm putting him in caution another commander that i think belongs in the caution category is Tarek. okay uh Tarek, and in fact i would say he is almost even more of a, of a caution than ysg because Tarek isn't really doing that many fancy things in the open field he has a very high single target damage factor he brings a ton of infantry attack a little bit of march speed outside of territory so it's conditional not as great as flat march speed increased damage to cavalry is nice because cavalry is the meadow right now in the open field and also he has a rage debuff with some all damage here on his fourth skill a lot of players probably aren't going to expertise him 5515 I think is the sweet spot for Tarek right now unless you're a rally lead of course but for the most part Tarek is what I would call a beat stick okay he is a vanilla beat stick all he's doing is beating down the enemy with damage tons of damage factor tons of attack some all damage damage to calves you'll notice the trend here besides the rage debuff it's all just damage and damage is one of the easiest things to power creep out of the game pretty much all commanders have damage on the active skill right so it's only a matter of a matter of time before there's just a new infantry commander with a bigger number in this position and when you do that like it's really only a matter of time before Tarek is replaced by another infantry commander that does more damage now remember I'm not saying Tarek is bad and in fact I used CPO Tarek a ton in this KVK that I was in, and I got really good results with him. He performed super, super well, but I'm not going to expertise him because I only use him in the open field, and eventually I'm probably not going to use him at all. And in the same category as that, I think is Henry. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be unhappy uh, with my placement of Henry here. And listen, again, I understand that henry can be really devastating in the open field especially if he's expertise he has a very good expertise so i i know that the trades here are really good okay but if you look at what henry is doing really high single target damage factor on his active skill he has a buff instead of a debuff okay this is a skill damage taken reduction for you now that means that it doesn't scale as well as a debuff right because if you debuff a target that means anybody hitting that target going to gain the benefit of that target being in the debuffed state but if you apply a buff to yourself then it's only applying to just your one army nobody else is getting benefit out of that your other armies aren't getting benefit out of that you it only scales to how many targets are hitting you and if you're getting swarmed down regardless you're gonna you're gonna die right so I think buffs are less valuable than debuffs okay 
so unlike Boudica who came out at the same time as Henry she has a really powerful debuff which is super super critical Henry has a very powerful buff which is good we look at his second skill we see attack and defense okay we see march speed once again conditional outside of territory now it's more than Tarek. it's very good the march speed is great here and this is a solid amount of stats the third skill doesn't do anything unless you're rallying the fourth skill here is archer damage direct damage factor okay the thing with henry here is like where where are the debuffs we see no debuffs here okay so again we're seeing a lot of damage there's no AOE here. There's no debuffs here. Yes, he's tanky, but you know what another commander is that deals single target damage that's really tanky? Saladin. Right. And and Saladin, I'm, he's not a bad commander. He's good, but there's better options now. Nobody's going to argue that like you should be investing in Saladin in Season of Conquest in 2023. So what Saladin was in the previous meta is what Henry and Tarek are in today's meta. So again, in his prime, Saladin was insane. Henry in his prime is insane, but he's not doing anything super unique that I think is going to keep him in the meta for a very long time. Time. so he's good today but i will caution you okay that in the future metas he may be one of the first to fall off now that is it for the caution tier next we have the concerned tier okay and i'm gonna put artemnesia here and listen i i get it okay i get that we have Boudica artemnesia is a very powerful pair i'm not here to debate that and i think that you can probably use that pair for a decent amount of time but here's the thing with artemnesia okay if you compare her to somebody like YSG or somebody like Nebu, she is not hitting as many targets in the open field as those commanders. Or if you even compare her to Zhuge Liang, obviously Zhuge Liang is much better. If you compare her to somebody like Henry, which we just talked about, she has health over attack, which is great, but she has no march speed. And as we move into a much more fast paced, big damage meta in the open field, march speed is almost non-negotiable in my opinion like it's so hard to use a commander effectively if they're really really slow because right now you're moving in and out of combat you have to move with the flow of combat and if everybody is outpacing you then guess who's going to be the last one in line to be targeted it's going to be you and then finally she has a self silence here okay which is fine for Boudica because Boudica has a high probability of removing that self silence but that really limits her to one pair there is one pair right now that I think you can use with Artemisia and that from a longevity perspective is not looking too great okay if you compare it to somebody like YSG or even somebody like Henry they have multiple pairs where they can perform their role in my opinion Artemisia has one pair right now and it's Boudica and if you don't have Boudica Prime then there's really no reason to invest in Artemisia and finally she buffs the target like are we not going to talk about that like her her expertise here causes the target to deal 15 percent extra skill damage for three seconds you're giving the enemy uh, a buff that's crazy especially because 15 percent skill damage is really good so while she does have aoe and henry doesn't she's missing march speed she's missing a debuff and she has a self silence and she buffs the enemy so she really only has one good pairing and i for that reason am very concerned okay that she will not age great okay now that I've pissed off all the archer mains let's talk about Zhang Yu Zhang Yu is a concern for me and listen I want to be very clear once again looking at these commanders these some of these commanders are in the best open field pairings today okay so again I'm not saying that these commanders are bad today some of these commanders especially Zhang Yu Artemisia Yashi, they're insane today but in the next cavalry cycle are we still going to be using Zhang Yu let's take a look here okay Zhang Yu has a three target AOE. That's good. He has a low rage requirement. That's good. He has a solid debuff 30% defense reduction for three seconds. That's very good. 40% attack, 15% march speed. All of this is great. He stacks bonus cavalry damage, which is nice. Although you do have to use six active skills for this to stack up to maximum. Okay. That's a lot of active skills you have to be hitting targets for at least like 30 seconds straight okay for this to stack all the way up 
and of course as long as you keep jumping between targets you can keep this up all the time which is great but if you misplay at all you're going to start to lose these stacks okay so there's that and then on the expertise he has some skill damage buffs here's the thing with Zhang Yu, and I'm going to be honest I'm less concerned about Zhang Yu than I am about Artemisia but he's still in the concerned category and the reason for this is because but Zhang Yu is just extremely squishy and not to mention his AOE damage factor actually suffers more than most commanders in the game because if you look here it says damage dealt to each target is reduced by 25 percent for each target now for most commanders it's actually only 15 okay that is the standard and in fact I'm pretty sure Zhang Yu is the only commander of the game that is this punished for hitting multiple targets which is crazy so yes he does have a really nice debuff there uh, but that damage factor isn't as great as you think it is which is why if you look at commanders like CPO he only hits three targets as well but his damage factor is higher and it's only reduced by 15 percent and it's reducing health which is a much better debuff we look at somebody like Guan Yu the silence is unique and great his damage factor is higher than Zhang Yu's and it's only reduced by 15 percent for each target we look at somebody like Zhuge Liang 2000 damage factor he hits five targets and his debuff is insane we look at somebody like Joan of Arc okay 2000 damage factor once again only reduced by 15 percent and she gains a damage bonus and a rage bonus okay plus it's gonna pop off twice which is insane so when we look at Zhang Yu his damage factor is on the weaker side defense reductions are relatively common already because we have so many Nevskis in the open field right now and he doesn't have any tankiness to his build plus in order to gain the benefit of this cavalry damage again you have to stay in the battle for a while and Zhang Yu is not good at staying in battles for a long time he's very squishy so I think his time might be running out I I really do if we compare him to other cavalry commanders I mean right now the thing with cavalry is that they just have so many great options that's really the truth with cavalry and that's that is the biggest thing working against Zhang Yu is just you have so many great options for cavalry it's actually insane and if you compare him to somebody like William for example who has more or less been replaced by Joan of Arc uh William also gives you 40 percent of cavalry attack and 15 percent March speed which is exactly what Zhang Yu is giving you but he gives you a 10 percent damage bonus he also gives you 10 percent defense bonus even if it's only at one but at five it's it's 20 and he has a huge rage buff and a march speed reduction like this there's so much to love about William that I feel like you know again there's just so many good cavalry commanders right now that I think moving forward Zhang Yu will be the first on the chopping block or of course he can go into you know if you're running three cavalry marches you'll probably still use Zhang Yu right but in a world where you're only using two right now I think Zhang Yu is hanging on by his final thread despite his kit looking great all right next let's piss off some of the infantry mains we're gonna put Guan Yu here okay uh and the thing about Guan Yu is that one I used him a ton this KVK I think he's great he's an exceptional commander and he's been an exceptional commander for years now but the key word there is years which means there has been years of power creep that have crept up on Guan Yu's status as one of the best infantry commanders in the game now here's the thing okay if you look at his kit in my mind he's very similar to Zhang Yu now the difference is that Zhang Yu can still be used in rallies whereas Guan Yu kind of can't and also Guan Yu is much slower so if we take a look here he's yes he's got a better AoE than Zhang Yu it's a higher rage requirement but it's better and his silence is more unique than the defense debuff on Zhang Yu it, it just is but if we look here he's got 30 percent of attack so he's got actually less attack than Zhang Yu does he has March speed which is great a conditional healing factor which is whatever and single target damage besides the silence here there's no debuffs to the targets uh there's really no buffs to yourself unless you get his expertise which a lot of players don't have and even this buff is very conditional and it's it's really more about timing like if you get a shield and you don't pop off a skill damage in that three seconds then this doesn't do anything anyway so when we look at what Guan Yu is doing he's really an AoE beat stick with the unique silence here but besides that right I, I mean is he really going to last another commander release cycle a lot of players right now have already benched Guan Yu 
for somebody like a Sargon with Scipio. If you replace your Guan with Sargon, sure, you're giving up the AoE and you're giving up the silence, but you're dealing more single target damage and you're making your Scipio a little bit more tanky and you have a really nice debuff that you can stack on enemies in an AOE fashion. There's actually a lot going on with Sargon's kit if you go through and read everything here, whereas Guan Yu is a very much a one trick pony, right? He's a one trick pony and I think he's really starting to show his age. Okay. He, he really is. He only has an attack buff, which means he's relatively squishy. He's not as fast as somebody like Zhang Yu because he's infantry. I, I really feel like Guan Yu despite him being insanely good right now may be replaced in the next infantry cycle i mean really all we need is a slightly better aoe commander and guan yu probably goes on the bench right at least for most players unless you're an infantry main in which case yeah you'll probably still use guan yu but i do feel like his days are getting to be numbered next let's talk about nebu okay uh, nebu is definitely going in the concern category i am more concerned about nebu than pretty much anybody else on here except for maybe artemnesia it's Hard to say i'm actually gonna put artemnesia here i am more concerned about artemnesia than these two but here's the thing with nebu okay um he hits five targets which is great but the 1500 damage factor is starting to show its age it's less damage factor than artemnesia it's less damage factor than ysg it's less damage factor than juga leong it's definitely showing its age and there's nothing else here this is a vanilla aoe which is not going to last a long time we have archer defense and archer march speed great that's nice but again, that's a stat stick skill. This can easily be power crept out of the game by a commander that just has 40% archer defense and 20% March speed, right? Like it's so easy to power creep this skill out. And then if we look at his fourth skill here, he has again, raw damage and a little bit of a rage reduction here. Okay. So there's a rage debuff. We saw something similar on Tark, but I mean, there's really not that much to his kit. His expertise gives you extra 500 damage factor in the active skill, but it's only to one target. So it's not like it turns this into a 2000 damage factor AOE. No, it's 1500. And then the one one target you're hitting takes an extra 500 so again this is almost the definition of a beat stick or a vanilla stat stick right all he's doing is raw damage yes there's a small rage a debuff here it's nice uh but with the lower damage factor here i just i don't see a world where nebu lasts a really long time in the open field army configurations that he is right now he's been in the game for a long time a lot of players know that they can melt him relatively easily if they swarm him down I mean I feel like I don't have to explain this one as much as I did for Zhang Yu or with the previous commanders I think it's pretty clear here that he's also like a one trick damage pony uh and once there's a new AoE commander in town um then that's that's pretty much it for for nebu now i really do think that in the next archer cycle which is going to be a while from now we'll probably see either nebu or artemisia completely gone from the open field if not both okay if not both so it, that's very very possible which is why he's in the concerned category and the final commander that we're putting in the concerned category is trajan okay uh and trajan i'm gonna put him at the very back of the concerned category and here's the thing about trajan for all the whales that have him if you are using six or seven marches he's pretty much in every one of those configurations right so for a commander that is so widely used by so many uh high-end players it might be shocking to you that i would put him in this category but here's the thing with trajan uh, he has an extremely niche role and and it would be so easy for lilith to replace him with somebody that does a similar role but slightly better and also uh, Trajan is in a unique position where he is a buffing commander he is he is the definition of a support commander and as the damage output of commanders increases over time yes buffing those commanders becomes more valuable but at what point do you say okay I'm just not gonna run Trajan because I have so many high damage options that it's actually better to just run a sixth or seventh high damage March over the Trajan now currently because there's no replacement for Trajan it seems like he's still hanging on into those six or seven March murder balls but again there's just so many high damn like when you compare Trajan in the meta today versus Trajan in the meta when he came out it's night and day right the commanders that are in the game today are dealing so much more damage than they were and you still can use all the meta commanders that were in the game when Trajan was was first coming out so at some point players are going to ask themselves is it worth it to have the Trajan buff or should I just bring a sixth or seventh 
super high damage army right eventually we're gonna hit that point and I feel like that is not too far into the future okay that is why Trajan is here and also again because he does one thing and he does it really well all we need is a new leadership support commander and I mean that'll probably replace Trajan and I just want to make it clear that again he because his role is so niche uh, he could just survive forever in that role and never be replaced and, and be fine. Okay, let's move on to the warning category with Alexander the Great. Now, Alexander the Great goes in warning category. He's the first warning. And what that means is that there's already a lot of other infantry commanders that you can use before you would use an Alexander the Great. Now, the thing with Alexander the Great is that he gives you a lot of march speed. 30% of march speed is really good for infantry and he's very supportive on his active skill the downside to him is that a lot of his kit is attack he has a relatively weak instant proc single target damage factor here and so when you look at his kit like okay yes he does have a really nice debuff 30 percent increased damage for four seconds aoe that's really crazy but does he deal aoe damage no does he deal a ton of single target damage no does he buff himself i mean i guess you can sort of count a shield as a buff but at the end of the day like his shine has definitely faded a little bit now we also know that his relic is going to give him i think 10 percent infantry defense and i think he'll take like three percent less normal attack damage or something like that right um and i just don't think that that's really going to move the needle for alex i think he needed like 20 percent health or something like that right like that's really what we needed to see for alex uh, and unfortunately his relic doesn't look like it's going to really move the needle for him okay so when we look at what commanders should you invest in before him i think guan yu goes before alexander the great and he was also on this list right he's right here i'm concerned about him and he's still better than alexander the great in my opinion obviously you have commanders like CPO you have commanders like Sargon you have commanders even like Tarek right these are all commanders that even though they're on this list I still think that they perform better than Alex and with so many commanders that um are taking priority over an Alexander the Great investment and then moving forward you know without his relic being exceptional I think he's just going to continue to be power crept out of the game which sucks right I love Alexander the Great I expertise him um I just I'm really struggling to find a use for him these days he's really not even worth a third infantry march I I mean he's just not you're better off running like a 2-2-1 composition even as an infantry main because right now infantry just doesn't have that many great options right we need another cpo prime for for infantry to sort of make an open field comeback uh and that's that's really just the truth so huge warning to those of you who are investing in alexander the great he definitely falls off at this point in season of conquest next let's talk about amana torre okay amana torre is a commander that uh saw a lot of open field play actually in in kvks like a year ago but at this point with Juga Liang in the game um she is not going to find her way into a two archer army lineup okay if you're running two sets of archers you have better options than a Manatore. those armies are definitely going to include a uh, Boudicca Prime they're going to include a Juga Liang and then you're probably going to include either Henry Nebu or Artemisia right those are all better options than a Manatore. Uh, and the thing with Manatori is that her single target damage is not great. She buffs herself, which is nice. She does have a, an 800 damage factor AOE here, but it's a 10 second cooldown, which is crazy long. Yes, she's immune to silence. And yes, she has a rage debuff, but this is also a 10 second cooldown. Her cooldowns are so long here. And she's really only bringing Archer attack and no March speed. So she's very slow very weak single target damage factor her cooldowns are very very long the aoe here isn't crazy and she just has so many there's so many other archer commanders right now that are better in the open field than a mandatory or at least more versatile so if you're considering building uh, another open field archer march you probably don't want to invest in mandatory i just think that there are better options even ones that are again on this list these are like all better options okay than a mandatory next we go and talk about Harold okay uh, here's the thing about Harold he is raw damage and we've talked about this time and time again uh raw damage just gets power crept easily okay the thing with Harold is that if he's primary people probably aren't going to hit him and that means he's only going to be doing a 1200 single target damage factor right now if he's surrounded he gets circular aoe 1500 that's nice and 20 percent increased damage now he's also going to pop this active skill a ton because damper bridge gives him a 20 percent chance to just pop this 
off but he is a glass cannon okay he reduces his own defense by a significant amount in exchange for attack so he is a very rampage reckless berserk massive damage dealer but his damage factor is getting power crept so what happens when you have a massive berserker damage dealer when you have a lot of other damage dealers in the game that are dealing more damage than him like suddenly it's not really worth having this commander that is you know he, he's pumping out a ton of damage and boosting his attack like mad but he only has 10 percent march speed right so he's relatively slow uh and when you have a slow commander that is a glass cannon that is outclassed by a lot of other damage dealers in the game right now like you don't really have a great use for herald that that's just the truth okay and a lot of his damage uh, you know the aoe damage scaling here is conditional upon him being surrounded and that's the last thing that you want for your herald okay you don't want him to be surrounded because he's just going to stack up his own defense debuff now i again i know that stanford bridge removes the defense debuff but it's only for three seconds okay and there's a five second cooldown here and like there's just so many better options than herald right now and it kind of sucks it sucks that that's the case and the final commander we're going to talk about here is pakal now i was so close to expertise in pakal like two kvks ago and i'm so glad that i didn't okay i'm super super glad here's the problem with pakal okay uh, when he came into the game the thing with the pakal herald and the reason why pakal herald is so legendary is that when they came into the game you couldn't really swarm them down uh if you swarm them down in the open field you would just simply take more damage and they would trade super well and if you're a well with this combination you could still probably pull this off but since pakal herald came into the game we have so many more high damage marches that have come out that really that's not so much the case anymore it is actually not that bad to swarm down a pakal herald right now if you have decent equipment with decent commanders and so that one niche role that they fulfilled isn't really there anymore and also the players when they see a pakal herald they know psychologically just ignore it right so if you don't have that advantage anymore what do you have you have 1300 damage factor to a single target a really small shield nice infantry health and march speed here but then the rest of this is just tankiness it's just all tankiness now counter attack damage is nice but again that that revolves around you being swarmed right so in a world where you're dealing a weak single target damage factor players are going to ignore you and your competitive advantage has been eroded away by power creep there's really no good reason to invest in pakal anymore unless you're a rally commander or a rally captain of course then you you may still want to use him all right that's gonna do it that's the 12 commanders that i wanted to talk about in this video so if you are planning on investing in any of these commanders i would just just think about what i've said in this video okay i've been playing this game for years i i know how these things evolve i know how the power creep works in this game and i think that while some of these commanders are very good right now if you come back to this video in six to twelve months i think there's a high probability that we won't be using a lot of the commanders that are here okay so if you're going to invest in the commanders in the caution section uh just be warned that like these are pretty much pure damage okay so they could be power crept out uh and then from concerned or higher um i think there's you know I, I can understand maybe wanting guan yu and zhang yu but besides that like trajan's a niche role artemisia is easily replaced nebu is gonna be replaced eventually and then definitely i would say almost definitely do not invest in any of the warning commanders unless you know honestly th there's unless you're a well i guess i don't know with that being said guys this video was way longer than i thought it would be so if you made it all the way to the end drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment down below what you think about what i've said here in this video am i right am i wrong i could be wrong so let me know in the comment section below just don't be rude about it okay obviously while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace